Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. But the fun doesn't stop there, no sorry. Every few episodes, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will ask you, the listener, to vote on which movie they will play as an RPG, recorded in video and in glorious black and white, and brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! Unlike our previous episode, this one is not booze-free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and emphatically uh, not. I'm the only one currently holding a shot glass, I've had two already. I'm, I will raise good our wait, 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 third toast you. of I'll the evening. You. Third toast of the I'm, evening I'm to driving, so. uh, good senor Matthew here for once again hooking us up with the old granddad. Fucking cheers. Oh, by the way, I don't normally swear like this, but it's just... No, that's a lie. I actually always swear like this, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, y'all. So my bosses with the with that soda machine thing. Oh yeah. They were like, You should go just go buy one. It's X amount of dollars. And I went and looked, I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is expensive. But next to it there were the actual flavors at Target for like four bucks each. How many how many like say two liters as a unit of measurement do you think you get out of one of those things of flavoring? I probably get a good twelve liters out of one of those bottles. So six bucks for six two liters. That's actually about the same. Yeah. And it's good. It's just then I started kind of taking out the sweet and low stuff in my diet because right. it gives that it gives a weird taste in the back of the throat. So. Yeah, that's that's the cancer. That's exactly. the bad stuff. Yeah. So speaking of sodas and booze, mm-hmm. I would like to take the moment to more product uh, placement illustrate my own personal favorite cocktail of choice. Okay. If we're gonna do this, then I'll go to my mine afterwards. It is very specifically something that you would not normally think of combining. Mm-hmm. It is. A glass of Coca-Cola mixed with red wine. Also called a Cali Mocho. I, I I have vision. Are you we drink still... it cold with ice cubes. Okay. I have this vision in my head. When you say Coke and red wine, for some reason, I have this vision in my head. When I was a kid, my mom drank a lot of Kahlua and cream, which is basically just a white Russian. Mm-hmm. And as a kid, you know, you try to sometimes emulate your parents so you're like i'm gonna have one of those but i can't have the kalua so i took milk and coke and mixed the two together and it would like curdle Uh. so when you say coke and wine i'm like immediately seeing like the curdling of wine for some reason i don't know it almost looks like uh what cherry red it almost looks like cherry coke oh wow dr venture yeah he always drinks these like weird ass drinks in in that show no but i did dr girlfriend for halloween one year two years you give us i think i saw time. you fo- i think i saw photos of that of you <clears throat> uh, oh oh well uh, the only reason i started doing it was because of the voice <laughs> <laughs> now you just get out there and you love those boys <laughs> oh my God. i i always see like this really greasy overweight balding new york superintendent oh when when i hear that voice and it's it's so weird to see that there on are dr. pictures body I might share them sometime. Maybe Bonus not. content, ladies and yes. gentlemen. <laughs> so, uh, following up on your favorite drink, so mine. I think when we were we were at your spot one night, I had, mm. I had ordered this, and and then I order it when I typically go out, and people are like, "Ooh, that doesn't even sound good because it's it's Malibu rum, yeah, with Coke and pineapple." Yeah, that's my that's a actually, it was get, delicious. Actually, I get Diet Coke, and one of my friends I posted on Facebook one night. He's like, "I don't understand why you even." even go with a diet coke that's hilarious i'm like there is so much sugar in this concoction already i i don't need it but it is it, it's one of those drinks that will hit you uh in a little bit well we'll just move on to mine then and i'll keep this fast because uh i have to say as, as a bartender i am ashamed to drink with a pair of you <laughs> <laughs> your red wine on ice and coke um yours I have is never almost, ordered that at your bar by the uh, way th- there's a good reason for that too um yours is almost respectable if it's before noon <laughs> if it's afternoon <laughs> then shame is attached i myself drink only the pure quill of golden amber liquid Product the old granddad the, the one true <laughs> bourbon the bourbon of power if you will is that like the one ring i mean are, yes. are you, is it like yeah. the horn of gondor for yeah you? It, no it's uh Honestly, there, there's bartenders drink excessively. I, I've noticed. And much, there, I know there are there are many bartenders that find Old Granddad to be the the finest because a 
it is though I, I make jokes about how it's how it's you know brewed and fermented. I really and hope they start paying us for this. <laughs> <laughs> no one's heard hide nor hair of them from the seventies. Just bottles of beer every now and then. But um, it's actually very well made. It's mm -hmm. it's the ancient tradition of bourbon is how old granddad's made. This is what like bourbon was. Yeah, this is what bourbon was in the 1800s. This is what this is cowboy bourbon. <laughs> and it's really good and if you haven't tried it, treat yourself, uh burn your throat out. It's it's good stuff. You'll love it. Hi, uh I'm Nathaniel. Oh no, that's not how we do yeah, it. That's not how we do it. Yeah, and now we Fail. have to go counterclockwise because we've gone hey, we, we've moved our me. seats. This is so getting into the cut stuff. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I think we should just roll with it. But yeah, that, that's just so. me. So let's let's go All ahead. All right. Hi everyone, I'm Matthew. And I am Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. This is half movies will game. <laughs> Wow, that was a really bad. We thing. already have the intro explaining everything. Yes, this is this is we true. talk so, about movies and then we play them at the table. So maybe th this week we were all around our TV, our own TV sets in our own little warm little little living rooms, all watching District Thirteen, B Thirteen, B Thirteen. Yes, excuse me, District B Thirteen. I think the correct name is District Thirteen, but isn't that the a sci -fi poster show? says B Thirteen in French? It's Banlieue, mm -hmm. Banlieue. 13 which is which barrio. is also yeah barrio yeah. barrio yeah. 13 but the poster just says b13 oh b13 was a good movie i liked it um for the too. most part there was there were some things that that i i didn't jive with on it but i did like it i think it is the ultimate buddy bro action film oh you're it, it, so mistaken there was a moment right in the very beginning where it, where i actually thought oh i'm really going to enjoy this and that's where they were showing you know how each of the companies the major companies that produce it have their slate mm -hmm. and it's normally slate fade out slate fade out but in this one it went all the way down to the beginning of the movie with the rat crawling out of the wall. And yes. I went, that's that's totally new. Yes. That opening sequence, I love clever opening yeah, sequences I do yeah. too. Like that. That take you right there, keep you in the world that they have created for the film. And it just, every little bit about that, like bringing in, tying things into the asphalt, bringing yeah. in the logos in that yeah, way, the mm -hmm. spray paint, the concrete, moving through the gutters. It connected you both to the... The shitty world that these people were in, but also to the parkour aspect of the film. I also really liked how um, how the intro, the the camera cuts moved with the music. Like mm -hmm. there, there was that that heavy beat at the beginning, and every time, well, not every time, but a lot of like every second to third, you would zoom forward with the camera on the count of the beat. Yes, I know that, that. That was that was really good. Now I like that that opening sequence. I'm a big fan of like the continual pan through things. Yeah, Goodfellas did an amazing job with it. You know, Scorsese did a great job with that. And then another really good version of that is in uh, Joss Whedon did it with, with Serenity. Yeah. Uh, this director uh, does oh, do oh, I'm some. I'm sorry. Oh, shit. Serenity. How is that not on the list? I think it is. Uh, uh, somewhere okay. on there. This, the, 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 the director of this movie, and I, let me make sure I get his name correct. It, it, it is, oh, yeah. It's Pierre Morel. He, he uses the kind of the same aspects in a lot of his movies because he has worked on quite a number of action movies and he's directed a number of them. Uh, what the ones that he has directed most notably being taken, uh, Ooh, with yeah. Liam Neeson's. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the, I have a very specific set of skills and I will find you and I will kill you. Uh, that was actually his second movie. His first movie was, was this one. His second movie was taken. So he kind of. Mm -hmm jumped up a, a couple of rungs in doing movies. And then he also worked on uh, The wait, Gunman. Wait, did you just say this was his first movie? Yes, this was his first his movie first as a director. As, as a his director. first major production as a director. Yes. I take back some of the things that I haven't said yet that I was going to say. <laughs> this was an amazing first movie. As a first movie, yeah, it was. But it he was. also had, but, but he had Luc Besson as a writer and an executive producer. That doesn't hurt. On no. this one and its sequel. Yes, and its sequel. And... There was an American version that was made for that, that was because because we're Americans and we like to steal everything. Uh, there was another version of this movie that was made an American version that was Paul Walker's last movie before he died. Uh huh. So, Doesn't it have cameos from yeah the, the guy, guy who plays Damien? Uh yeah, and then the the cop in this movie I think plays the yeah. the cop in the yeah. in the U S version. I loved the cop. Yeah, yeah, I did too. Yeah, he was. I liked him more than. Than the, than the main actor. I really did. Significantly. Yes. Yeah. He uh, had more personality, but I think the main actor had more moves. I, I well, the main actor is the one that kind of invented, quote yeah. unquote, parkour. I, 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 I just like to break in real fast. Sure. I watch a lot of kung fu movies. Mm -hmm. I love the overacting of kung fu movies. And one thing that really struck me about this movie 
was they, they kept the elegance of the move with the Kung Fu movie, but none of the showmanship. Mm-hmm. Every every leap over a car, every punch was done, I, I feel, more brutally, more, more directly. And there's it a lot of like slowing the film down to show yeah. like, sometimes how brutal, and then the speed up, right? It, it wasn't second. to show the, the art of the thing. It was to show its impact, its hit. And I, I thought that was a very interesting choice to make because a lot of French cinema is about showing the beauty or the futility or the emotion. But this was just about effect. And I thought that was an interesting departure. It was good. It did cost uh, $13 million to produce, which That's for a first nothing. movie is like nothing. I think Kevin Smith's clerks came in at like 20 when he did that. And yeah. like, if you want to compare first movies... Yeah, <laughs> vastly different and a less budget. I had heard that Kev- that Clerks was like twenty thousand on credit cards. Is that- oh, well, yeah, he, he, he did maybe. that, but yeah. I think that's what it grossed. Uh, maybe <laughs> uh, the, the 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 return for in the states, however, it was a complete flop. I mean, mm-hmm. one point three million was the return on this movie in the United States. Like, I had nothing. I had never heard of this when, movie until a few it... years ago. I saw it on Netflix one night when I was really bored, mm-hmm. and I watched it. I was like, holy crap, this is... <laughs> wow! This, come out? this came out in 2003. Now, the foreign return was $8.3 million, So The timeline might have had something to do with yeah, the Yeah, so it, it was released too. in 2003, and the story itself takes place in like the far distant future of 2010 <laughs> yeah. uh, in a supposedly futuristic France. This is labeled as a sci-fi action thriller. Yeah. Does not feel like sci-fi at all. There's, I mean, maybe like proto-dystopian. Very but, dystopian. But not like in the realm of Mad Max dystopian. Well, that's full on post-apocalypse. Yeah. There's a spider on the wall back there. Oh, don't eat it. <laughs> um, but so, I don't want it to live either. <laughs> Take its life. So the, it, the, the this I whole movie not. is that the government has built a wall around the district, the the barrio, the District 13, as it's called. And that's specifically to keep the drug dealers out and the gangs and the crime lords from, sorry, from getting out, not, you know, anything else. And inside, the crime runs completely rampant, as we mm-hmm. saw. I mean, there's like, it's a free for all. It's almost like the purge inside. I think the opening sequence actually did a fantastic job of telling all of that with very little words. I agree. Yeah. Because I agree. it yeah. shows everything you need to know about the world is told right there through the opening credits. You see drugs, you see tenements, mm-hmm. you see guns, you see armed forces protecting a grocery store. I did like the squalor, supermarket, yeah. Gutted out cars, dumpster fires, like they had that little bit of introductory text that happened at the beginning. They didn't even need it. No, they didn't. No. And I also like the class separation by the nicer your car, like mm-hmm. the more tricked out your car was, the more money and the higher up you were in, in the gang itself, yeah. which was kind of which was kind of cool. Because being a car guy also, it was neat to see some nice cars. Was that a Corvette that they smashed? That, that red one? Yeah. No, that was a Viper. That yeah. was like a late 90s Viper. That was a beautiful car, and I felt so... <laughs> <laughs> I, I hurt. I hurt when that happened. So the movie begins, and the, our main character, uh, I, I could never really hear if it was Leto or Leto. Leto. Leto? Okay, Leto. Uh, he somehow, I don't know if he, I never really got the impression that he stole the bags. I just thought that he just kind of was a mule almost. I, I got the impression that he actually worked for him once upon a time. Like okay. he, Taha he knew. Taha. Yeah, he knew Leto, didn't he? Yeah. And Leto knew Taha. Like okay. they, they were in some sort of business together. Okay, because there are some things, there, there are some holes throughout that like there's some exposition they don't really focus on yeah the guy's got his drugs other guy wants them back go yeah there yeah yeah, there basically is that and several bags of heroin and he's washing them down the drain in the in the tub as the gangsters are coming up now the gangsters that showed up oh what was in the big guy k2 K2, 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 yeah k2 awesome i loved k2 he was probably my favorite character out of the whole movie i i really liked his I'm I'm loyal to the boss. I'm following the boss, and then everything that happens through him, even though it's brief little asides, yeah. I'd like to see another whole movie. I, that's I very just much him. would like to see K two. One of the things I noticed at the very beginning was uh, everyone was wooden and going about their roles in the dystopian uh, setup that you were talking about just a second ago, and then he steps out of the car and he has a surprisingly mobile face. The range of expression he shows is amazing and one of the things i really liked about whoever played him as an actor who i'm sure you can answer is that none of his facial expressions touched his eyes the entire time 
his eyes were so cold when when they're up there grilling sausages. And oh, that whole scene when he rolls up smells good. Yeah, (laughs) munch. Interesting side fact there. I mean, you think of the traditional, you know, you're breaking bread with somebody that shows his coldness right there as he, you know, writes it on his hand, talks to him, plays with his food a little bit, and then fucking straight up murders him. Uh, <laughs> I mean, so just... so that actor is uh, Tony DiMario. I would be interested in seeing more of him. And you won't. He actually passed away in 2005. Oh, really? Uh, he was. Oh. He had a bit part in The Messenger's Story of Joan of Arc. And then uh, Body to Body in 2003, and he now died. Now, that's a damn shame. Yeah, he died in Paris uh, 2005. Huh. Oh, yeah, that, is, that, is, that is a shame. Raise one up for... Raise one up. Our departed face man. Yes. But I, I, I thought he was brilliant in, in yeah. that little part that he did have. And I think he had the most, also the most humorous part. Oh, definitely. And I think it was a lot of it was because of... He did kind of play the the dumb, bumbling go-to guy to get the job done, but he also just had a lot of good facial expressions, yeah. which helped, yeah. like you were mentioning. Huh. One thing I love about this movie is another thing I loved about The Fifth Element. Mm-hmm. The scene transitions are flawless. Oh, agreed. Yeah. A lot of movies will have scene establishment shots. They will have these transitions that just show a lot of dead nothing mm-hmm. they'll, they'll they'll show a scene or they'll show something you know, a bunch of people just hanging out at a bar or something but they don't show anything interesting all the transitions in this are like moving something's happening yeah the Ooh, pacing is great for happening. it and that's one yeah. of the things that i really i really liked about it uh the the main character leto Le- leto uh who's also who's played by david bell is absolutely amazing to watch as he jumps across yeah. rooftops he down goes, flights of stairs why go through a door when you can go through the window above Ex- the door exactly it's it's amazing <laughs> i mean he he any like anybody that does something that physical he makes it look so easy yeah, like uh, i could i could just go i was like oh i i'm 300 plus pounds i can just go out there and uh, i'm gonna break a leg i'm gonna break my neck yeah it's not i'm gonna get like two inches off the ground and be like i did it Ta-da! <laughs> it's not gonna happen so <laughs> I, uh, I i think it was very convenient that they had orders to take him alive because yeah parkour or no parkour kids if you know a couple tricks don't try and run from a gun not ever mm, <laughs> guns will I mean. run faster than you no matter what yeah no matter what. There were a few scenes that were odd in that way. I thought that when they first, when they break back into B-13, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and there's some guys <laughs> who start shooting at Damien, and then they just stop shooting at him for some reason that I don't even know. And then they all decided to run downstairs and beat him up. Or they after said, after but, he grabs the, the, the sister in the first hostage scene, yeah. when, uh, God, what was his name? Uh, the bad guy, Taha. Taha. Mm-hmm. Taha. Um, Taha grabs his sister, right? And they all break out. And they're like, don't shoot, don't shoot. And there's that big walkout thing, which is incredible. And yeah, we'll that, was, that, that was good, yeah. And then they're in the car, and they're like, oh, I can't see them anymore. Spray it with bullets. <laughs> you know? Yeah, wh- wh- where are they just shooting at their boss? I didn't quite get why that was happening. Yeah, I didn't really understand the whole, we're going to shoot you, but it, but somehow, magically, the bullets are not going to hit our boss. Yeah, and, and because a lot it of was movies very do clear that. there. Yeah, and he know? was very clear, don't do anything stupid as, they were being, as he was yeah. being escorted out. So it just shows that his, his troops are really dumb and he needs to get new, new I people. I think what it is yeah. is that he's actually a, a war machine war caster and he lost the line of sight with his troops. <laughs> so the I can see that. that he lost line of sight, he lost his focus and all mm-hmm. of his, his war jacks are just decided, yeah. all right, time to kill. All right. Uh, <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Okay. Yeah, I, I can I can go with that. <laughs> so after after Lido escapes catcher, uh, capture uh, Taha's men capture his sister. We were just talking mm-hmm. about that just a moment ago. Whose name is Lola. Can we go back to the, the, the scene where they walk through the barracks, though? The the, the little shimmy and the panty and the mm-hmm. mouth thing? Yeah. That was weird. That was weird for me. I want to say it was hot, but it wasn't. It was it was a little weird for me. <laughs> it was it was a little out of Maybe place. Maybe it's a French thing? I don't know. So so to, to backtrack on that, so as, as the bad guys are bringing in uh, his sister to to the main baddie to Taha. There's a whole bunch of going on with the guys. You know, they're all doing mm-hmm. the cat calls yeah. and everything, and they're all doing grab ass and they want time with her. And she smacks a couple of them. Well, her poise as she walks through that was actually fairly impressive. If you yes, watch her face, she showed no fear, only anger. Yes, well, yeah, I want to commend that. Yeah. American movies would show a lot fear, of fear yeah. and and being scared and and just 
the the whole everything that goes along with that. She did have her held her head held up the whole time. She was pissed off. She, no very fear. Very much. <laughs> yeah. Very small, petite, very very petite French woman. She's gonna kick some ass if if she yeah. if she could. And one of the guys asks her, you know, can I, I, you know, I want your panties. Yeah. And she makes some comment. I don't remember exactly what, but it's basically no fuck off. Yeah. Um, when they're being brought back out at gunpoint by uh, what's his name, Lido, and his, and his sister with the with the with the boss, the guy that asked for his panties, she gives them to to him. She like takes them off, like holding his, his her gun up at him. Yeah. And like kind of one handed takes her panties off. I, I and wanted shoves them in that his to mouth. be a, 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 a sexy moment, but I'll, instead it was just it struck me. I think me it was odd. meant to be more badass than sexy. Yeah. I, I think it was supposed to be badass. And I think it was supposed to be empowering. I think, but it kind of. Felt lost. It was weird. It was just maybe just how the camera angle was, or how it was out of place. Because I it, think I think you might be a- right about camera angle because they were still shooting up from her perspective, and that's a weak camera angle as opposed to down. Yeah, I mean, but maybe. I think also in in a realistic situation like this. Okay, you've you've got two people that have the boss, and you've got three dozen people around, all pointing guns. Someone stops to take off their panties. I think it would be bum rush moment. Yeah. And it would be, would have been game over, but you have to advance the movie. So I, I get that. Yeah. I, I get why they did. I just, it felt out of place. It felt that that was an off moment for me. That was a yes. strange moment of disconnect. So from this point, they escape, they get away and our, our stalwart main hero, he gets to the police compound and he's got the drugs and he's got the bad guy and he's got his, his sister. And, and, and you think the whole, the the movie's gonna end here. This is a, a French twenty minute movie. Right, right. It's a short film, and it's gonna end, and he, and everything's gonna go off in the sunset and be well. Well, the cops turn on him. Spoilers. Yeah. Well, we've everybody knows that they're yeah. spoilers. Well, the cops turn on him, and they they bonk him on the head. They put they put him into this jail cell and let Taha leave, and they let with the sister with the sister, and that sets and up the, the whole drugs. that sets up the whole chase sequence for the entire movie because that's. Basically, what the whole movie is is, is revenge. It's when, getting the sister. Back. When they released the rest of the movie, and I'm I'm sure at this point people will have seen it, so I I can skip ahead and talk about things that happen later, right? Yeah, yeah. we probably shouldn't go beat by beat. No, no. no okay. No. Well, I I just want to say that when the when the bomb happens earlier, the first thing I thought after watching the cop pull out, then I was mm-hmm. like, I I knew how that was going to end when that happened when they're fighting over the numbers at the end. Mm-hmm. That wasn't a, a shock to me. No, no. I was wasn't. like, from that moment, I was like, oh, okay. we're going this route. Yeah, yeah. There, we, there were a lot of moments in the movie that were like, oh, we're going this route. Yeah, it probably could have been hidden a little bit better, so that it was a better, uh, better shock at the end when you're like <gasps> blowing up their own people. Oh no. Yeah, that that was that that definitely set a tone, and it set it hard enough that it stuck with me. It it was almost akin to that part in. I'm going to divert and go to another movie real quick. It was mm-hmm. almost akin to that part in Total Recall. Fuck you, Kohagen. These people need <laughs> air. It was almost to that for me. I mean, it was that. Eh. That actually wasn't a bad Schwarzenegger either. No. no <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I, but, I um, never try. There was uh, that. That was a rough scene. Um, and I, I thought the actor who played Leto did did very well with that. Those those were good yells he gave off. Yeah. I just loved the whole Again, one more reason why I think this is one of the ultimate buddy bro movies is because, all right, cool, we we had some animosity, and now we're bros, but now we ain't bros no more. Yeah. <laughs> now we go fight. <laughs> oh, okay, we bros again. Yeah. It was pretty, like, we just did that transition of straight up macho buddy bros. Yeah, yeah. It was, was wonderful. I the, like getting to the cop, but the cop is what happens next in the movie. Anyway. Yeah, getting to the cop yeah. is great, and, and the subterfuge of, of him getting to... to <laughs> You know, be buddy buddy was was great, and you know it's not going to happen. Oh, what was that guy's freaking name? The uh, Pedro pa- Carlos. Carlos. Oh yeah, his obsession you, with education. Yeah. I love that because <laughs> you, you you think this this ghetto rat he's got what he thinks is a nice car, what he thinks is a nice suit, what he thinks is a nice haircut. Mm-hmm. All he's missing is knowledge, so he's feverishly looking for knowledge. Yes. <laughs> That that it theme turns, turns back into play right at the end of the movie. Yeah, when, mm-hmm. when Taha's men realize that they're not getting paid. Yeah, the accountant just like I'm going to leave now. Excuse that was- me, <laughs> and he just like steps over everybody. <laughs> Pardon. One of the things that I really liked about the movie was the the camera action that was going on. Some of the really good uh, handhelds, the steady cam work that was going oh, on yeah. in, the, in the fight sequences. 
loved him. The and this is was, all pre-drone too. Yes, yeah. This is very pre-drone. This is this is up close, getting up into your face. The director ended up using a lot of the same ideas that he when he went into Taken, mm-hmm. uh, which is nice. So you can see a lot of like the baby steps, yeah, uh, of things that he wanted to do, and they were nice to see, not completely fleshed out and and in a, in a complete formula. So it was great to see the 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 fight sequences were really well choreographed. And I really liked the end fight with the with with the Yeti. If the you remember, boss fight. <laughs> yeah, we have the boss fight because when 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 they make when the boss guy makes comment about you know if you fed him, if you look at the door when they knock on it, it says Yeti on it. It says yeah, yeah. It, you know very very big words Yeti. I think that was the same guy. If you watched Ocean's Eleven. That was the his buddy that was hired to beat up George Clooney when he was taken to the back room. Oh, that was so long ago. I yeah, I, I, yeah, I know, I know. But I think he was in that movie too. I didn't do any research on it. But one of the other things that really kind of strikes me with this movie is it's to me it was like watching somebody play Double Dragon from the old Nintendo game. I, it's funny you should say that. I had like the flash of a thought watching uh, watching this movie too. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah. I did. I yeah. didn't. But I. Totally see it now. And now oh, we're yeah. gonna play some Double Dragon. Even 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 the boss of the second stage, uh, a Bobo. He's a tall, bald, shirtless yeah. gang yeah. member that throws heavy items. Yeah, and that was the guy that we were just the, the Yeti. That's mm-hmm. if you look at Double Dragon and you look at this movie. It, I, I think there was some very strong <laughs> influences. With you're some, you're not some wrong. I, there. I felt that a couple of times. But I I want to hit Carlos real fast Please, again. Go ahead. I loved. That whole that whole scene, and it was all just to set up the cop. Oh, it was it, beautiful. And God, that 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 uh, fucking casino fight mm-hmm. that paid a lot of chiropractors' mortgages. Oh, they dropped yeah. a lot of guys on oh, their back on the edge of tables, and I winced. I mean, I I, I realized there's stuntmen. I realized there's bars sewn into the suit mm-hmm. to take take the impact, but it looked real, and it looked. Oh, so painful. Oh, especially when he jumped from the second floor <laughs> onto the guy, onto yes. the table. God. And you can see him get up like, oh, God, that hurt. And then look around like, everybody's gone. I, yeah. took, <laughs> I just took out like 16 people. That that whole setup sequence, because that's all it is, is introduce to character, show what character can do. The reveal of pulling the, the wig off. Uh, so good, because he's like, I has a mole. And then there was, uh, what was his other minion's name? Uh, I think he kept calling him Pedro. Yeah, he kept calling him Pedro. Sammy, Sammy the accountant, the educated man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, uh, Sammy was what, the last to die in that room. Yes. Uh, but when, when, when Sammy says, has a mole, he goes, oh, who do you think it is? And then he just turns and shoots Pedro. It's the guy it was beautiful. Right next to it. <laughs> it was great. And then, he, and then the, the sleeve gun that pops out, just the, the, the quick slip out from, uh, yeah. Rodriguez did, was yeah. really good at doing, doing this in his movies, just the pull out gun and then the firing, which it, it was nice. You know, there's an old book and this is a bit of a departure, uh, but there's an old book by Harry Harrison that's, built entirely around that form of weaponry and harry harrison did the stainless steel rat and bill the galactic hero but this is called death world and it everyone on this planet had a gun that if you made the shape of holding a gun a gun would be there from a forearm holster and that's what that looked like that didn't look spring-loaded that just looked like need gun gun here bang (laughs) it was it was a very cool practical effect. Uh, so that that uh, wig transition that he does in this movie, mm-hmm. they play it up in the second movie, which we'll never get to. So a little bit of trivia. Okay. They play it up in the second movie by taking it a step further. His first scene in it, he's fully in drag. Oh, really? <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Is this the same actor? Same actor. Huh. Yeah. That is one unattractive woman because he wasn't a particularly attractive he was, man. He was not an no. attractive woman, but... I don't know. He he walked well in heels, <laughs> <laughs> and Grace does play a part. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I was going to say something similar. So well done there, Rogers. <laughs> but um, I I have to say I I thought that action sequence was first rate. I loved when he shot the shit out of his car at the end. Oh, though yeah. I thought the pull up of the van to him was a little contrived. Good job, buddy. Good job, Captain. Mm-hmm. Good job, this. Good job, that. Fuck you. And then, and then <laughs> the van just pulls up, opens the door, so the guy can just say. Captain, and then they have that little exposition yeah, where I felt he shows a little he's out a of badass to shoot the car. Yeah, the, the 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 two basically Glocks. fully automatic. Those are fully automatic locks with banana clips on them. Yeah, 
Yeah, those are the 40 round Glock clips. Those exist and they're beautiful. Um, I, I like those guns. I do. I think they're great in movies. I know in the, our last podcast, Fifth Element, uh, yeah. Luke Perry had, it's, it was called a street sweeper then. Um, it was just a handheld, basically like a Tommy gun. Yeah. And they do a lot of damage. In movies, they look great. I just don't think they're practical at all. No, they're not. Anything yeah. that any, like- anything that's uh, fully automatic <laughs> on, on a frame of a pistol is going to go all over the yeah, place. Exactly. <laughs> I do like that most of the action that the heroes do and most of their their the violence that the heroes perpetrate is physical. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Like most I don't remember him shooting guns much. There other was than that one scene. Yeah, there was yeah. a there, there were one a, scene. I think might have been a couple of others where there were guns of convenience. But yeah. For the most part yeah. it's them they hit people. They knock guns out of people's hands and they do such glorious disarms. The fight scene with the Yeti was Fan freaking tastic! Oh yeah, and they did the whole Adat thing from Star Wars. Yeah, they yeah. Took, the, took the cable and just wrapped it around. Him. I, it I just gorgeous. love, I love the finishing move of that with the with the cinder block. It leaps up on the pallets and it's it's straight it's basketball mode. dunk. Yeah. I mean, the the legs are back, the arms are back it. over the head, and it. Bam! I, I I have a problem with it though. What's that? It's the cut on it because. As he's taking up the cinder block, mm-hmm. and there's a there's a wide there's a wide shot of the three of them, mm-hmm. and you can see the Yeti is very angry, and he's he's trying to break free, and then it cuts to him coming down on the, and it's very apparent. I'm going to just stand here and do the cut and let you and let this fake cinder block. There's right. no emotion. There's no movement like he was previously in the previous very the scene prior he was furious yeah, it, yeah. So it was just a, it was a bad cut for me in my bad that's fair cut, yeah in my opinion they now, stepped away wrapped it him looked up and, good yeah. i mean to the, to the undiscerning eye and and how fast it can move but when you watch movies a lot of movies and you start to pick out those little nitpick things that people call you an asshole for yeah you see them and that was one of those things that i saw and i was like oh that i would have i would have cut that a different way i have to say i'm really glad that you all have invited me onto this podcast because my girlfriend hates to watch movies with me really because i i sit there and i analyze them and i go oh well there's a there's a flaw oh continuity error and oh, I'm the same way. Shut up. Shut up, Matthew. <laughs> well, one of, one of the reasons that I, uh, we've had this conversation that we are going to be talking about new movies, too. We're yes. going to be having new movies in several of our episodes. Mm-hmm. I enjoy hitting pause and taking notes. And that is something that my fiance hates. <laughs> I have this problem where... Movies pose questions to you, right? They'll, they'll sometimes answer it. But movies will drop little hints, and you're supposed to guess what happens next. And my mind loves stuff like that. It continually races ahead. Mm-hmm. So when I'm sitting there with my beloved, and we're eating dinner, and there's a movie on our lovely big screen, and all of a sudden I shriek out, I knew it! I knew it! <laughs> she was <just gets laughs> furious with me. I, I did that. I, I went to see The Sixth Sense with my parents mm-hmm. when it came out, and I knew like 40 minutes into it, and I'm like, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. And my dad said, he's like, shut up. We know you know. It's Stop. like, enjoy the movie. I am enjoying the movie. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Every M. Night Shyamalan movie I've ever seen, I did not go into it knowing it was an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Okay. <laughs> So I know that everybody's always like, oh, you go see his movies, you look for the twist. I wasn't even expecting a twist. I was mm-hmm. just like, I'm just going to enjoy the ride. The Village blew my mind. I did I not even get it at all. Both twists I did not get. Mm-hmm. I did not see them coming. And so I was like, oh, fuck, that's cool. And The Sixth Sense, that one blew my mind, mm-hmm. too. I did not see that coming. Unbreakable, I saw that coming. I still haven't seen any M. Night Shyamalan movies. But you were just talking about The Sixth Sense, weren't you? Or was that him? That was, no, that was him. me. That was me. That was Dusty. Hi. Hi, Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's just a, a hole in my thing. I watch a lot of sci-fi, a lot of fantasy, a lot of classics, huh. a lot of kung fu. What? There'll be some classics we'll get to. And definitely yeah. some kung fu. Yes. I, I thought when he does go up with that cinder block that the way it was shot was perfect because... If you've ever watched a basketball game mm-hmm. or watched or opened a Sports Illustrated, yeah, it it is exactly that shot as someone setting up for the dunk. It was the, the Michael. Camera, jo- it was the Michael Jordan. Yeah, the camera is in yep. the spot. Yeah. He's in the air. 
Uh, the Yeti was the hoop, apparently. <laughs> he yeah. may even have done that split leg thing. I, yeah, I I think Jordan it, did. Yeah, I think it, so. It was it was a very very well shot scene. Oh, it was. The hell out it of was it. just that cut, that split second cut. It Honestly, just, it I didn't notice me. it. I'll have to go back and yeah, look again. And now it's gonna it's gonna dig it is gonna brain. bother me. Yeah. And now I have to go look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's nothing more I can bad I can really say about that part because yeah. it was it was it was well done. Just you know the the choreography, the fighting, the. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The overconfidence yeah. of the cop going machismo. in. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The machismo, yeah, yeah the machismo. cop going into is like, I like big things to take down. Yeah, whatever it was he said, and he he leaps through the air, puts his feet up to hit him in the chest to knock him down, and he like, you know, the, the yeti like him. pushes his chest out, <laughs> and the guy just drops to the floor. Like nothing happened. It was beautiful. Yeah, as a man in a bar who's faced a lot of little men who get angry when they're drunk, I understand that completely. It's like, <laughs> oh, you're adorable. Now come here. <laughs> you know, did anyone else notice when uh, when the the cop is talking to the uh, I, I'm, I'm going to say senator? He looked like about that level of government official. Yeah, yeah. he reminded me of the senator from the X Men movie. He was a senator, right? Yeah, it yeah. will say yeah. senator. Yeah, senator is the classic maybe, maybe prime scumbag, minister, prime yeah. minister type, president type. Yeah, in, in French, the clean bomb. Did you? Did anyone else catch how he says it? I don't remember. Clean boom. bomb is is boom pop, boom pop, boom boom pop pop. Boom, I did. Pop. I didn't it was know what boom fucking pop. adorable. That, that that's my that's my boom. Justin Bieber cover band name. <laughs> boom, boom, boom pop, pop is <laughs> down now. Boom pop. I I literally paused the movie and started laughing. Oh. And like, as you can see on my notes, it's all like fucked up writing because I'm still <laughs> laughing as I'm trying to write this down. Boom um, pop. It so, sounds uh, like a kid's candy. Like, oh, it's all <laughs> boom pops. <laughs> it's, it's like, here's a clean bomb. We're going to wipe out a city with it. Brought to you by Barrio 13. Oh, God. <laughs> and I was like, it's, it's, it's such a cute sound for such a horrible concept. <laughs> Yeah. It was very Lilo Dallas bada boom. Yeah. Bada boom. Big yeah, you have the whole boom. big <laughs> boom pop. The 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 whole writing uh, very much you can tell it's Luke Besson. Oh, absolutely. just in the writing. Yeah. And he gave him a whole he gave the director a whole lot of maybe you should try this camera <laughs> angle and that camera <laughs> angle. I got to say another thing I really liked was the uh was the cops refusal. It's like I'm not, I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. um, I have no time. I have a system. This is not the system. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. I liked. I liked his improvisation when he's like uh, gets beaten up by the guards, thrown out. Oh look, I'm escaping. And I thought for off the cuff that was good, but I also thought a suspicious bastard would see through it. Oh, and absolutely and, yeah. right on cue. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it was there was no beat to it. It was just like, yeah. oh, you're a fucking. Cop. I remember yeah. my first time through that, thinking he sees right through this shit. It's it's classic. It's that that one's it, been done to death. Oh, and I was gonna I, say I it's like, a trope that's been done in so many movies. And I, I mm -hmm. like that it, he just instantly was like, "Well, you know that that that's not bad, but uh, you're a cop." <laughs> you know. The other thing that that I really liked that was really quick and. I mean, they didn't really put a big spotlight on it, and so it was kind. Of, I mean, it was fast. When the cop is on the phone to his bosses about transferring the the twenty million yeah. euros, and he's reading the the account number. I mean, first of all, the bad guy gave him the account number. I mean, just gave him the account number, and then you find out that later on that they wiped everything. Oh, I out love that. Out They're of like, every single account. You just did you. You literally handed him the card. Yeah, with <laughs> all of the account numbers, and he repeated it to his superiors, and they just took all your money. Oh, that was that was glorious. Uh, another thing I really liked, there was a, a point in the movie that I thought uh, spoke to a, a bit higher ideal than the rest of the movie was, mm -hmm. you know, because it's Are we gonna buddy get the comedy. philosophical side yeah, of this? Yeah, vaguely. I mean, um, and they mention it twice, but I mean, this is just a buddy comedy, kick him up, you know shoot things fast cars but there was a, a point where um damien was talking about the bomb and he says but it'll kill millions of people and taha says they should have thought of that when they made it and that, that was a brilliant line that yeah, replaced that twice and that was because the, they say it again at the end mm -hmm. and that was an amazing piece of writing right there because we don't think about that do we no we think about you know the the big bada booms and yeah no boom pop yeah, boom pop. But the, the serious no people with no serious damage. degrees and a serious amount of education sitting around right now making big things that kill 
an amazing amount of people, and we have, have them. Become and, Shiva, yeah, which, and, which and, does circle back around to the 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 drug guy in the beginning. You know, the, I forget his name, the one with the bad hair, and oh, Carlos, ha- yeah, Carlos, wanting to have educated people around yeah. him. So it does. There are there are a lot of circles in this. In it, this it, movie. I just I I found that to be an incredibly telling, and like it was it it took me right out of the movie and made me stop and think for a second, because there's a very real way that the criminal is right in that particular instance. Uh, when you, when you take a thought and you, and you're thinking about morality that, Oh yeah, we have those. (laughs) We have, we have hundreds of those thousands. Yeah. Uh, we have serious men watching it. We have systems, we have plans, we have plans on plans. It was a a shock moment. Maybe it was just to me, but I, I literally stopped the video and thought, thought about that for a second. And then when they revisited it at the very end, I was like, yeah, that's that that was the telling point of the movie where I went, oh, look, it's it's a cute little thing to. Oh, someone actually put a little oh, bit it, of thought it, in there. It's a sobering thought. It yeah. is. It really is. It reminded me a lot of the end of the original Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid, mm-hmm. sorry, on mm-hmm. the PlayStation. Yeah. The whole end of that game is just one big exposition against nuclear weapons. You'll, you'll have to forgive me. I, I never played that game. I did. <laughs> I, I I had a question. Okay. The rescue the bomb. They have their exposition. They have their fight. Now, the sister tries to light herself on fire. Admirable. I love that she did not try and sit there to be rescued. She's like, I bet I can throw the tracking system on this thing off. Mm-hmm. Oh, look. Gasoline. Yeah. yeah. Matches. Mm-hmm. And I really like that she did not play a damsel in distress at any point. The, yeah. The whole movie, she movie. was her own person and never needed really yeah. anybody that being said i have a very serious problem and that is six months later mm-hmm. that's six months of uh heroin fueled frenzy later yes. she looked awfully good 24 uh 24 hours or less yeah after coming off a six-month heroin bender I, the only thing that makeup did on that was they cracked her lip lips yeah, yeah. a lot and then that was it. There was there was no bruising. There was, there there was, was no, bruising around the eyes. But I mean, there was no, the next day after ooh, they talked yeah. to the senator. I oh. she's bright eyed, bushy tailed. She's certainly not hooked up to any IV to keep her stable and not dying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, and the withdrawal hasn't kicked in yet. So, yeah. but still, come yeah, on. that was a moment where I was like, Nyeh. it's like with that moment. It's it's that part in any any major movie when somebody. It comes in from the rain for that split second. They're yeah. soaked, and then their hair is perfect again. Yeah. Hello, everyone. You are listening to Half Movies Will Game, and this is Nathaniel. We're about halfway through the show, with a lot of exciting RPG content coming up in just a minute. First, I want to take a very quick moment to tell you a bit about what we're up to here. We recorded these first four episodes as a proof of commitment to ourselves before we went forward with an official launch. We learned a lot through this process, upgraded our equipment a little bit, and figured out some tricks that we didn't really know going into the thing. We hope you can hear our improvement as the show progresses. Please bear with us as we iron out the wrinkles and know that we appreciate any feedback you have for us, especially so at this crucial early juncture of the show. In the future, this break space will be used to promote our friends and sponsors, and we're excited to talk more about them. So thanks again for making it this far, and I hope you will enjoy the rest of the show. All right, so welcome to the uh, gaming portion of the show where we uh, we take the elements of the game, uh, of the movie, and we try and find a game that we think would fit it. Nathaniel, you had some thoughts about this. I did. So what we have historically done is kind of compared the characters to... Yeah. We first start talking about... Who would these characters be in D and D terms? <laughs> these these characters are identical. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, so I think who are both they? monks? <laughs> yes, they I, are both I, monks. I think we disposed of that little part there of the we segment. Go. Yeah, yeah, okay. well, Moving I'm on. Total agreement. One, one day, Wizards of the Coast might release the special player's guide to parkour mm-hmm. with, with <laughs> rules for that. But until then, these are this is a dual monk buddy bro action game. Yeah, which I kind of want to play now. Yeah. I want to play it. I want to play K two. There's yeah, a crime I, I, I boss. I would play K two. There's a crime boss yeah. and he's sending you out on jobs. And I I think that that is where a lot of the gaming lies is actually in the NPCs world and not so much in the titular heroes world. Mm-hmm. I can agree with that. Like this is GTA, post apocalyptic GTA. So, oh, you know. that's good. I like that. I can see that. Yeah. 
Yeah, K2 would be an interesting character. If we were to do that, then we can go ahead and break into one of the games that have been on my list, mm-hmm. which again, I haven't actually read this one, but if it plays like the other games in its ilk, it's called Action Movie World. Okay. And in that game, it's a Powered by the Apocalypse kind of game. So a quick rundown of how Powered by the Apocalypse games work. Uh-huh. Basically, you have a set of stats, and those stats are anywhere from like plus or minus three. That's about it. Right. Mm-hmm. And whenever you want to do something, you roll 2d6, and then you add in your number for whatever it is. So mm-hmm. like for Apocalypse World, you might have a stat called hard, and hard is your ability to be hard and do right. hard shit. Uh, one of the characters is a hard holder, and they are the crime boss or the uh, master blaster kind of character. Right. Or, or Tina Turner's character from that, from yeah. Beyond Thunderdome. Oh, such a great character. Anyway, it, for an example, you'll roll 2d6, you'll add your stat, and you either will get one of three results. If it's a 10 or higher, everything you want happens, and probably then some. You you go, hey, shit, nice. you do awesome stuff. Uh, You get what you want, uh, and the story definitely moves in your favor, and it's a happy day, at least for you. Right. If you roll a 7 to 9, usually there is a partial success with a partial failure. There's a little bit of give and a little bit of take. Whereas if you roll a 6 or less, you're fucked. Awful shit happens to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Most Apocalypse World games don't have rules for what happens to you at 6 or less. The GM just gets to say what happens. I really like that. It's it's contingent on having a good GM, but um, if you have a good GM, that's a fantastic way to do a little. Oh, I, I've played some games with some horrible GMs, as have I, that I wouldn't trust to lead me out of a paper bag. But you know, it's the yeah. only thing in town. So, <laughs> so I don't know action movie world, but now that I think about it, Apocalypse World could basically be this. Yeah, you mm-hmm. could do Apocalypse World, and I think a fine example of stuff like that happening is. When Leto takes Taha and his sister mm-hmm. to that police station mm-hmm. yes, and tries yes. to turn him in, yeah. he rolled a six or less right there. He got fucked. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he did. <laughs> but when Leto is doing some cool stuff, when he just pops in out of nowhere from yeah. the roof, <laughs> that was clearly a 10 plus on his infiltration yeah. check. Like, he just, boom, popped in out of nowhere, I'm here, and you're fucked. <laughs> so there's there's all, all good examples of that. It's very narrative in that way. Usually there's some kind of mechanics involving getting hurt mm-hmm. or sacrificing some of your resources or mm-hmm. strings or depending upon what flavor of the apocalypse engine. Action movie world is... I, I'm really doing a disservice to our faithful listeners by this is two episodes and I've still yet to read this one and multiple people keep suggesting it to me. I apologize. One of these days I'll get it. If you want to send me a copy, hey, I've got one. You have a game. I have a game. Oh, I thought and you were about to say you had a copy of action. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, I actually <laughs> have Let me a, see it. <laughs> have, have a, Bring a, it unto us. A, a game that might work for this. What? And I haven't played it since 1989. Oh, wow. We're really going back. Oh, that really limits the playing. Yeah, that does. I I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about, it might have been 91, Ninjas and Super Spies. Oh, God. Oh, dear Lord. That is on my list. Check that one off. (laughs) Ninjas and Super Spies would be a fantastic one if if you're into Palladium. I barely remember it. We're going to be talking a lot about Palladium games on this (laughs) podcast, because really, there's a Palladium game for everything. There there is, and that that helps, but... uh, Yeah, see, I I never liked that gaming system, though. It's not likable. Yeah. It is... It is... I love you, Palladium. I want you to know that. I bought all your books. I cut my teeth on Palladium. My first tabletop game was Palladium. Yeah. Yeah. See, mine was D&D, first edition but it's, of my brother. God, it's, it's, it's so hard to do anything in Palladium, but... Absolutely. The range of their imagination and the art in their books. Oh, the I mean, art is amazing. Like, they're, they're buyable as art books, if nothing else. I will agree with you completely 100% but on that. I, while, I, while I wanted to throw out that game, it's not the one I think you should go with if you want to play that. But it would, it is. It's in, perfectly in that world. doable. Yeah. I don't think there, I don't think parkour was a thing when that was published, but yeah, gymnast. You could probably, yeah, gymnast yeah. skills and because the gymnastics and the acrobatic skills, if I remember correctly, they have a lot of sub skills that are like 20% yeah. chance of body throw, yeah. 70% <laughs> chance of backflip. I'm like, how does this work? You just roll the die and you backflip, dude. Okay. 
very poorly explained system, but with lots of potential. That was my entry anyway, and that, it's dimly remembered from childhood. There have been easily 300 bottles of old granddad that have passed through my system <laughs> between then and now. You are well fermented. We're really trying to get that sponsorship, aren't we? <laughs> there are things in this world you have to believe in, Nathaniel. You just have to try granddad for it. <laughs> just try for it. So another game that I think would actually work is Shadowrun. I was thinking that too, but I, it seems too I near future. Well, Shadowrun... I've hacked Shadowrun uh -huh. to run a fantasy game. Really? I've used the Shadowrun 4th edition rules to run an Iron Kingdoms game. Oh, wow. I just, I've I, used the it whole non-human thing. Game. You know? You just the what? what? The whole non-human thing. Oh, you can thing. easily cut all that out and just stick with the, the core mechanics. Okay. I, I, I yeah. could definitely... Take out the I magic. Thought about that take myself. out the metahumans. Yeah. Just use the standard, the gunplay, yeah. the action mechanics. It's still going to get bogged down like crazy because that's Shadowrun. Yeah. But one of the fortunate things about this movie is that there's no hacking yeah and that's what bogs down a shadow run game yeah so something like this shadow run what i like about it is it has uh well shadow run has character archetypes which i think these parkour characters could probably fulfill mm -hmm. yeah the physical adept in shadow run so yeah no there's no magic but these guys are the top of their game yeah you could easily stat them up as physical adepts just kind of hand wave it and describe it as being the top being being awesome yeah like his power comes from being a super cop and this guy's power comes from being a paladin in the the ghetto or something that approach is something that i really like in a lot of uh in a lot of games that i've seen done and that's um it's it's not necessarily magic it's not necessarily a superpower it's just someone being incredibly in tune with what they have you yes, know it's, yeah. it's complete body Focused, awareness yeah. And that's that's something I've I've always wanted to play, and there's never quite a system for it, unless there just might be. What you got? Do tell. That was subtle. Thank you, everyone. And of course, <laughs> I, again, got to give a shout out. This game could be perfectly doable in Savage Worlds. Core book. You don't even need any kind of extra stuff. There's rumors of a martial arts compendium coming out at some point in the future. It's not out yet, but Savage Worlds. Fast and Furious, mm -hmm. you could easily do what they were doing, agility tricks, and just kind of go to town with it. Yeah. You don't even need anything but the core book. My, what I, what I consider the winner, what I think would be the best game for playing this, is a game called Wushu. 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 Wushu is a game that is distributed for free online. And Ooh. there's... There's not necessarily, from what I understand, been multiple editions of it. But, but I mean, for version, free, I mean. The version that is out now consists of the original Wushu, plus a whole lot of expanded content shoved into the book. Yeah, this is the Black Belt edition that we're looking at. All right, let me see this here. It is the ancient art of action role-playing. It's a very simple, fast game. Mm -hmm. But wait, 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 wait. Before we get into Wushu, we talked last week about uh, what was the movie we talked the game we talked feng shui yeah, feng shui yeah, yeah. too could also do this yep. because the crazy action mechanics in feng shui i think could do this there's well. there's a, honestly a lot of games where this one could happen with wushu it's really simple whenever you want to do something you just describe what you're going to do and it happens mm -hmm. the dice come after the fact you and the more you describe and the more you put into it the more dice you roll you can there, there, there's a limit per character per scene uh -huh. But there's actually a clause if you just go so far that you've gone beyond the dice limit and nobody <laughs> wants to stop you. Mm -hmm. Guess what? You win. It's great. <laughs> I can see how that could be both a good thing or a very bad thing. So every detail that you add to your narration earns you a, a die. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading the intro. And this is so well written. It, it is. It really um, is. Would you like to carry it away? You know... If you've never played an RPG before, I might use a few terms that are unfamiliar. I've tried to get away from the usual acronyms in scrutable ciphers like NPC and GM, but a little definition goes a long way. When I talk about, highlight, players, I mean the closeted sociopaths that sit next to you at the gaming table and describe scenes of unspeakable carnage. I mean, there, there's a few like this. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's, it's lighthearted, and I like that. I actually like getting into, there's there's once you get into the playing the game area, I'll skip through some of it. But uh, going to, for the most part, your wushu sessions will play out like this. You, 
Ninjas fall from the sky like rain. They create a ring of swords, chains, staves, ginsu knives, green clovers, and purple horseshoes <laughs> all around you. I crack my knuckles, curl my fingers into kung fu fists, and trace a line in front of me with one foot, daring them to cross. I stab the first ninja with his own sword, kick the second in the throat, crushing his trachea, duck a staff swing and leg sweep the fourth, then flip over the fifth and let him catch a volley of shirkin in the chest. Finally, I kick him into the shirkin thrower, crushing them together like a jagged metal Oreo. <laughs> and, and it's great because it says here, in short, a bunch of creative types with violent tendencies are just trying to one-up each other oh, with this quick bursts fun. of action movie imagery. And I fucking love that. Th this sounds a bit more just like... The the more articulate you are, the better you do in this game. And I yes. like that. That sounds Basically. like a fun game to play. It's encouraged for the players to kind of take control of the action reins and go forward into greatness, either by themselves or even better, you can play off of each other. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody's in a good has a good spiel going on, somebody can be like jump in, yeah, I'm gonna jump in and give you a leg up and then I'm gonna climb up your back, then do a spinning back kick, totally oh drop a concrete block on you that guy. I, I I I have to read this one too. The governor's kick hits me in the throat, crushing my trachea, but he made the mistake of thinking I'd defend myself. Instead, I envelop him in a bear, in a bear hug, and we plummet through the shattered floor. The railroad tracks tear us both to pieces. The train shears off his head when he hits the back wall, but I manage to anchor myself with one hand. They salvage my head, arms, most of my organs, <laughs> then rebuild me into an even more powerful murder machine. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I could play this game. So yeah, very, I would I would be very happy to play this game yeah. sometime. One very specific bit of text uh, that kind of explains the whole spirit of the rules. Remember, everything happens as you describe it, when you describe it. Dice are rolled afterward, and they only tell you what should happen next. I like that. Yeah. Because I've I've had to roll for, like, jump rope. You know, in in some systems, and I'm like, stupid rule. It's like, if a if a seven year old has managed this, can't we just say that my character has done it? Can't can't we just? <laughs> yeah. That, so you might be interested if you are enjoying like fantasy gaming. You might be interested in the OSR realm of games because they kind of harken back to an era when characters didn't have skills. Uh -huh. A character could just do things that it was assumed that a fighter should be able to do, for mm -hmm. example. Right. Like, if you were to walk in, I kick in the door, well, guess what? The fighter can fucking kick in the door. Yeah. Now, if the mage were to walk up and say it, well, like, you know what? You're, you're, you're not heel. strong yeah. enough. You're going you're gonna to break your heel. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should probably bring a hatchet. <laughs> or you should play wushu. Right? Yeah. Or you just get to or say what just happens. throw a fireball. Yeah. No, um, I... I, I would really like to play this blood soaked amnesiac. I oh, actually yeah. really like the artwork in here. It's all silhouetted. Yeah, it's very I really stylized. Like that. Yeah, kung fu witch. So one of the things that this game does is it builds on the concept of the enemies consist of either mooks or a nemesis. I like that. Yeah, I'm, I was and I'm looking mooks at that now. Just have you can just you just get rid of them. That's it. Yeah, they're disposable. They, you, they're completely dis all those ninjas. Those ninjas are completely disposable mooks. You mow them down. Uh, your your GM will set up like groups and narrate how those groups are interacting with you. And if you are segmented, you might not be affected by the mooks. You might be over here in the corner while your buddy, <laughs> while, while Lado's kicking the asses because they separate at one point in the movie. So Lado, I believe, is being hounded by a bunch of mooks, uh -huh. and Damien is also being hounded by the mooks. But I think he's also being hounded by the boss, yeah, uh, he is. by K two. So Damien would be fighting a group of mooks in a nemesis, mm -hmm. while Leto is just fighting a whole lot of mooks yeah. and getting some really awesome roles. I think both of their players kind of went wild, and the GM is just like, yeah, you just you just get it. Yeah, have fun. Yeah, just have fun. Yeah, this looks really fun to the play. The only thing you cannot narrate is your own victory. You have to earn that with a dice. You can narrate all the action, mm -hmm. and then once everybody's finished narrating all the action, then you roll the dice to see... Okay, how does that resolve and what happens next? Okay. So after someone scores a hit or lops off the last point of threat, the following round of description is what's called a coup de grace. Rule zero still applies, so don't be a dick about it. Directors shouldn't execute heroes. Players shouldn't humiliate nemesis. Try to stay focused on the stakes you set way back in the beginning of the conflict, but otherwise just kind of go to town. Right. God, I'm still flipping through this. I... I, I think I need to play this game. 
I, I, rifle I want to fencing. also. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a very interesting laugh over there. It was almost going into Family Guy territory. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah, um, to whatever listeners we have <clears throat> at this early hour, this is a free game. There's really no reason why you shouldn't have this in your collection. It's, yeah, it can it can be found. It's noted in here at uh, danielbain.com slash wushu. That's D-A-N-I-E-L B-A-Y-N dot com forward slash wushu. Yeah, this the, is what? The full book is on drive through RPG or RPG Now. Okay. Whatever, whichever you prefer to use. It is being sold as pay what you want so you can throw as little as nothing or you can kick them some bucks. There yeah. is not currently a print version available. I sought one out. Mm-hmm. I could not find one. There were numerous links. And if you look at the drive through RPG page, each one of the comments is, where's the print version? Yeah. Yeah. This so, is- Daniel, where's the print version? Make it happen. <laughs> this, this is honestly, I'm, I'm very impressed by this game, especially for a, a pay what you want game. Um, it seems very well thought out. It seems very balanced. Um, he certainly didn't have to spend a lot of time. He, he spent a lot of time doing tone instead of, uh, working out how the rule mechanics would, you know, jive with each other, mm-hmm. keeping if, it equal. Do any of you remember the old Real Ultimate Power websites? I know. So Real Ultimate Power was popular in the early 2000s. It was the website of this. Okay. I don't actually know if the person who designed this website really lives up to the persona that they put forward. Okay. But the persona was that this was like... Wait, wait, wait. People lie about who they are on the internet? Really? That was back in a time where it was more difficult (laughs) to find out if somebody was really lying about themselves. I I did a lot. But Real Ultimate Power looked like it was put together by a hyperactive tween who was obsessed (laughs) with his own mythical version of ninjas so real ultimate power is just a website about how ninjas are fucking cool and ninjas are the coolest things ever and wait wait, wait. Totally isn't this like cool. every 13 year old essentially it's basically a 13 year old wet dream website okay all right and it's got this really annoying background music that you can't turn off so it was a geo city site it was themed after one i don't know that was popular in the early 2000s and i think the guy even made a book it, it, it had its heyday. Do you for remember a while. what it was called by any chance? Real Ultimate Power is what it was called. <laughs> real Ultimate Power. This is the Real Ultimate Power role playing game. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if Daniel <laughs> is that it, they, is that <laughs> a kid all grown up because it kind of reads like the same kind of text on the yeah. Real Ultimate Power website. Yeah. Well, I think we have our game. I think we have our yeah, game. Yeah, I think we have a uh, we've got the movie and the game. So going here. that was District B13 and the game is Wushu. Wushu. Yeah. Nice. Thank you for bringing up the game. We appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And is... uh thank you for joining us this week. Now, we'll be back next week with an oldie but goodie. This is one that I suggested and I'm really interested in doing. Uh next week we'll be um doing the original Transformers the movie. Yes. And figuring out what game to play that with. I have some ideas. But, I've got uh, ideas too. I'm really, honestly, I'm just excited to I, see the movie. I, again. I already have a lot of notes for this movie because this is one of my my childhood movies, and oh, I God. loved it. Yeah. And growing up watching Transformers, and then the movie, yeah. I mean, we're gonna like probably go into the in. I'm in not gonna say a word yet element. because I got nope. so much to say. About oh yeah, this. I know. I and, and so, so I those... have deep seated emotional issues connected to this <laughs> from being a kid and seeing. Nope. Nope. No, yeah, 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 not yet. No, no therapy not session yet. yet. But, but suffice to say, if you're listening, it's probably going to be a longer podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but thank you for sticking with us so far on our second. Yes. Episode number two. Number two. Yeah. Uh, and not, not the kind of number two that oh, I associate I really the was you March with. <laughs> I was really hoping you weren't going to go there, but okay. <laughs> Who can resist a good poo reference? Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you. I was Matthew. I'm Dusty. And this is Nathaniel. And we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're a new name in the enormous sea of podcasts and appreciate any feedback that you can send our way. If you like what you've heard, Or even if you didn't, please leave us a review and let us know. Got a movie or a game that you want to hear us talk about? Drop us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com or hit us up on any of the usual social networks. We'd love to hear from you. The opening theme music is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, part of the public domain and found on publicdomain4u.com. Opening narration is provided by Isaac Scher. 
Half Movies Will Game is distributed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you again next week. 